people in the fracking companies, were they, did they understand how it was affecting the communities? Um, most of the, you know, most of the companies or, or the, the, the shale ga or the gas drilling PR companies that I spoke to, uh, con you know, kept on admitting or kept on um, denying any cases of contamination and, and reassuring me that it was perfectly safe, that fracking mm. has never contaminated water supplies, that it's been done for 60 years, that it's perfectly safe. But then there's safe. this proof there. And then in, in the other side, you know, mm -hmm. speaking to, uh, to the scientists and the professors, one professor in particular who worked with the fracking industry for two-thirds mm -hmm. of his career to develop the process, um, who's now stepped back and is cautioning against it, mm -hmm. saying that it definitely hasn't been done for 60 years, it's just, you know, just over a decade old, um, that there are documented cases and, and there are a lot of documented cases and partly, you know, part of the reason that's for them to say there are no documented cases is because of the gag orders that, that I mentioned earlier. Wow. So it's really having to take the sales pitches presented and t almost sentence by sentence try and unpack that mm -hmm. and see what the true reality is. And once you have that, um, draw a conclusion of whether or not you would support something like fracking. Yeah. Well, that's from the shale gas company side, and we've heard a little bit about um, from the family side, the people who are living in the communities. Did you, did you find the government w were concealing any kind of information when it comes to fracking? I think the government is, if we're talking about the U.S. government yeah. while I was there, um, I think the U.S. government, well, one, th one, you know, one part of the answer to that question is um, the regulatory agency set up to, to monitor fracking mm -hmm. in, in the various states, so in Pennsylvania, the DUP, uh, in Colorado, the COGCC, yeah. so there are different sort of environmental agencies right. that have to regulate right. this are hopelessly understaffed and really struggling to, to catch up with this boom, the drilling boom that's just taken off, and still try to understand what it's about. Because it's a, it's a technology that's still in development mm -hmm. and still being ironed out while it's you know, going live well, on yeah. the field. Which um, is really scary in itself. Yeah, I mean, you know, but there are different arguments for that, but it is scary mm -hmm. because there are guinea pigs along the way. Yeah. And so you know, I think m many, many Americans that I spoke to re admit that the, the agencies are doing their best, but you know the one statistic is that one of the in, in one of the states, um, the regulators set up to go around and inspect every well can only get to every well once every four years if he works every single day and takes no breaks because there's so much to monitor and regulate. It's a massive, massive, expansive extractive industry. Um, so I think there's a there's a there's a real uh, the real challenges to trying to regulate this properly, and then on the other hand, if you think of the bigger picture, you can't have a, a discussion about fracking without considering the massive amount of influence oil and gas industry has on U.S. Yeah. politics and the amount of um, oil and gas money that's that's flowing into to campaign coffers, mm -hmm. and how that influences uh, the decisions made by government or in terms of you know easing up on regulations or turning a blind eye here yeah. and there. But also, you know, those gag orders we spoke about, that also prevents the, the local agency coming in and asking that family about what happened to them. Yeah. So the agency is also not really able to learn from the different cases and, and try and uh, therefore put in place better regulations to monitor that because there's a lack mm -hmm. of data overall. Wow. Um, and I, you know, I was, I was lucky enough to speak to a, a U.S. senator and a medical professional who used to be the doctor for the U.S. Senate and, and the vice president mm -hmm. two years. Wow. Um, and what they share, you know, it is, it, is pretty, it is pretty incredible. I mean, the doctor mm -hmm. says their agenda is different. You know, the, the people in power in, in the U.S., their agenda is different. It's, it's not necessarily on the ground what's happening. It's about making sure that, you know, your, your party stays, stays at the top oh, and, yeah. and that, you, you know, you win the next election. It is, you know, they're always running for office. You know, every two years, they're always running for office. And um, it's a, it's a, that in itself is a big discussion yeah. to have, but I, we did bring it into the film because I don't think you can, you can look at this. We try to, you know, go into the nitty of fracking, but also try and contextualize that into, mm. into the broader circumstances like, you know, the political climate um, in the U.S. And then the repercussions that has for countries outside of the U.S. who are considering fracking, because fracking is really just a U.S. sales pitch. So you have to understand yeah. where it's coming from and how it's been sculpted. Right. Um, in order to understand, you know, if it's, if it's all that rosy or all that bad.